time here. It's not looking too great. Yeah, it's pretty dark. The lights aren't working, but I'm here. Yeah, well, this crazy guy used to live there, and he left all these boxes, and we need you to clean them up. Convenient. Yeah, I could do that. Just give me a few hours. Plural. But yeah, I'll get it done. Talk to you later. Hey there, I'm Brendan Peterson, the founder of Dark Slide Pictures and the director of Paper Wasps. Welcome to episode 14 of the Appalling Productions Mondays series. This episode is entitled Gorilla Filmmaking, The Camera. So let's just jump right in. There are six important factors to know about the camera that we are going to cover in order to help you choose the right one for your project. At the no budget and guerrilla filmmaking level, it is important to understand the ins and outs of your camera so that you can utilize it in the most creative and beneficial way to help you achieve your goal and the look you want for your project to have. Remember that this series is about educating people who may be new to filmmaking or new to cameras and would like to understand them better. There are no easy answers when it comes to what camera is right for which project. There are so many variables involved, the project's budget, etc. But six of the variables that we're going to cover now are important things to understand when it comes to cameras and the choices that are out there as technology evolves at a rapid pace and new stuff is coming out all the time and these six factors are important no matter what. Okay, so let's get into it. Dynamic range, DR. The ratio between the largest and smallest values of a changeable quantity. When we are talking about light input upon a camera's sensor or the emulsion of film, we talk in terms of stops. F-stops to be exact. These are measurements in the amount of exposure a shot is getting. A common f-stop to shoot in low light, for example, is f2.8, and a common f-stop for a bright sunny day, for example, might be f22. The dynamic range in an image represents the number of stops contrasted between the darkest and lightest part of the image. So in other words, the dynamic range of an image is all the information that's available in the darkest and the brightest parts of the image. Codec. A codec is something that must be understood when it comes to digital filmmaking. But it's also something that's hard to wrap your head around. When video is encoded by a camera, it basically needs a wrapper to put the files into. And these wrappers must be encoded and decoded in real time by computer software. Because of this, the codec that you use to shoot largely affects things like color depth and information in both the lights and the darks. The typical codec used to stream online videos, for example, is known as H.264. An example of a more professional film codec is something like Apple ProRes 422, 
which the beginning short film example was shot in. Resolution Resolution is another factor that needs to be thought about. It's rapidly changing as well. At one point, the standard resolution was called just that, standard resolution, and it was 640 by 480 pixels. Then HD came along and the standard eventually became 1080, which for widescreen film is 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now things are working their way towards 4K. This means various things. One thing for sure is the images are getting more sharp and digital zooms are becoming a lot more possible. Aspect Ratio the standard aspect ratio of widescreen is known as 16 by 9. A lot of older movies and television shows will have black bars on the sides. This is because they are in what's called 4 by 3. It's a different aspect ratio that used to be the standard. Aspect ratios get a bit more complex than that as well. The beginning short film of this video is technically what's in called 1.77 to 1 ratio. Lens Mount Understanding the lens mount of a camera is important. Even if you're using a camcorder that has a built-in lens, it's important to know this stuff. A common lens mount for a cheap yet effective camera is Micro Four Thirds. Since there are so many damn lenses out there and quite a few different mounts, I'll talk about the one that we use as an example. The mount we use for the Blackmagic camera that shot the example video is the EF mount. This is an overall very affordable mount which uses a lot of different Canon lenses, and old vintage lenses as well. Sensor Size Sensor size is the final important factor we are going to talk about today choosing a camera. Once again I will talk through example. Our Blackmagic camera is what's called Super 16mm sensor size equivalent, which isn't quite what you would call a full size sensor. A full size sensor is the equivalent of 35mm. So in actuality the EF lenses that we use are actually a bit bigger than our Super 16mm size sensor. So, it's only sensing light from the middle of the lens and not around the edges. This is what's called crop factor, which is a very important thing to know about. Which is why knowing about the sensor size of your camera is very important. Camcorders naturally have an even smaller sensor size. You can see here we have a jazz camcorder. And the, the sensor is of course going to be very small. And this thing shoots in 4x3. And the quality is not very good, but this thing's also worth about 30 bucks. Then we move on to the Canon HV40. And the sensor size of this thing is actually what you would call 4 third inch, something like that. And it's a CMOS sensor, and it's nowhere near full frame, but it's also not even super 16 millimeter. And I'm just going off the cuff here a little bit, but. Yeah, these are some of my old cameras, and now we go to the Blackmagic camera. And this is Super 16mm. It's not even full frame still, but the quality is still quite nice, because Super 16 is still quite nice. It's widescreen, and yeah. So you can see some differences here in the sensor sizes, and you can physically see that the cameras are bigger than each other. And here's the camera that we are using to film this YouTube video. I mean, besides the intro segment, which I, I think you can tell looked a lot better than these segments. But the reason that I use this lesser camera to shoot the YouTube videos is because the file size is much smaller because it uses a lesser codec and has less information. And I can shoot more stuff and not fill my computer with freaking terabytes of stuff because well I already have terabytes of stuff and I'm running out of space you aren't going to have an image without lights and lighting for film is a huge subject in itself so I'm going to keep this part brief 
Whether you're using house lamps, LED work lights, or RE Compact Fresnels like we did in the first beginning video. Work towards utilizing light in an artistic manner and your story will shine through and be polished that much more in the end. One thing I can say is that when using a cheap camcorder, I found that having lots of light helped the quality of the sensor. But some newer cameras might not require as much light and might be better for low light situations. These are all things you should think about and hopefully all this information helped you in making your decision on what camera to use for your project. Hey, thanks for watching Appalling Productions episode 14, Gorilla Filmmaking, The Camera. Stay tuned for next week's episode, which is Gorilla Filmmaking, The Sound. Oh, see you later.